Hello. Welcome back. My name is Kelly. This is Kelly Hooked on Books. Um, today I am starting a vlog where I am reading true crime books. Um, I have two in mind and we'll see maybe a third, but I'm not sure. Um, I've always been interested in true crime. I don't know exactly why. Maybe just trying to figure out why these people are doing what they're doing. Um, my dad was a correctional officer growing up, and he always watched these true crime shows. I wasn't really too interested back then, but as I got older, and I also worked in a prison as a nurse, um, I just got more interested in these things even before I worked in the prison. But um, So the two books that I'm planning on reading are released and that is about Gypsy Rose Blanchard and I think she probably had um you know like a ghostwriter because it is basically her being interviewed on the eve of her being released from prison I believe that happened sometime before Christmas or sometime before New Year's 2023 for those that don't know she and her boyfriend well her mom, okay, let me start from the beginning. Her mother, all through her childhood, um, had been claiming that she was sick. She convinced all these doctors somehow to prescribe her these meds. Um, she had told the girl that she was, you know, you can't walk anymore, so we're going to push you around in this wheelchair basically abusing her and it is called Munchausen by proxy where the parent or caregiver more or less causes inflicts harm on the person um to get attention they only gain attention and it harms that person so she got sick of it she ended up somehow getting in touch with this man online they got together, boyfriend, girlfriend type deal, and she had gotten sick of what mom was doing and more or less convinced the guy to kill her mom. So he's doing life. She just, I think, did eight or nine years and got released. But this book was an interview with her right before she was released from prison. I believe there is an Amazon Maybe not Amazon, but there is some kind of interview with her. Uh, it's probably going to be about the same information, but there's also a show called The Act on Hulu with Patricia Arquette and Joey King, which I watched. And I don't know how accurate that portrayal was, but I enjoyed it when I watched it and I knew that it was about this crime. The other true crime I'm going to read is an Anne Rule um, lust killer. I think it's just about one person. Sometimes her books have several different cases in it. Um, Anne Rule is very uh, notorious. Well, I don't know if you want to say notorious, but well known for writing true crime. She wrote The Stranger Beside Me, and that was about Ted Bundy. She knew him. Um, I don't know if it was before he did his killings or during his acts, but this has been sitting on my bookshelf. Um... So I figured I would include it in this. Uh, I don't know if I'll put another one in. Sometimes mm, one true crime book is plenty at a time. But I think the Gypsy Rose book is going to be less intense with the details as this one is. So let's go. I have started both books. Um, the Gypsy Rose one is only 125 pages, so I do have another book um, that I plan on reading, and I will announce that at the appropriate time. It is a fiction book, but it discusses, like, the obsession with true crime, so I thought that it would fit in this book. Reading vlog, excuse me. So the Gypsy Rose book is written in... It opens up with a letter that she wrote to her mom in one of the classes that she took in prison. And then she had this woman that would call her and talk to her. 
And all the phone calls were recorded. I don't know if the lady that was talking to her recorded the phone calls or whatever it is. But there's like excerpts from their phone calls. And then whatever they were talking about, she elaborates on it in addition to the phone call log. Um, it's okay so far. It's pretty short, 125 pages in the ebook form. But she also is stating that she has a memoir type thing coming out. I don't know that I'm going to read that because I feel like I've watched the shows. I'm reading this. I don't really need more. She's been doing a lot of Gypsy herself has been doing a lot of press um, touring in preparation for the release of this. Like she was on The View and a lot of like podcasts. So I'm just kind of, after I read this, I think I'm going to be like, had my fill. Um, the audiobook of the Anne rule book, apparently, I got to let the cat in. He's on the porch and it's cold. Um, <laughs> apparently, she used to write under a pen name, a man's name. I can't remember. Something stack, Andy stack, something like that. Um, so this book is about Jerry Brudos, and he was a serial killer in the 70s, I think, was obsessed with women and their shoes and like had like a foot fetish. So I'm not too far in on that. It's about an eight hour audiobook. I should be able to finish it in the decks in a day or two. Um, and then once I'm done with those, I'm going to start on this last book. I finished the Gypsy Rose book, and it is more like a... I don't think of it as true crime. I mean, her, the person herself, is associated with a true crime event. But the book doesn't really cover exactly, like, I don't know. I thought it would be more true crimey in terms of everything. It was more or less what she learned in prison, how she's trying to get by with what after she's done what she did, and what she's looking forward to doing when she gets out of prison. There's going to be a docu-series on Lifetime. There's going to be another book, blah, 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 blah. So I'm not, I started, I decided not to rate nonfiction anymore. So I don't have a rating for this. I probably won't have a rating. Well, maybe for the one. So I am still working on the Lust Killer book, audio book, and I'm not sure when I'm going to start the other one. So I am about 25% in on the Lust Killer uh, by Ann Rule. She wrote it under the name Andy Stack. I knew of um, Jerry Brudos before, which is the person that is this book's about and his victims. Um, very frustrating read because the police, like law enforcement, dropped the ball a lot just in general in this era. Like, it seems like the serial killers that were out and about during this time period got away with a lot because just I don't know if it's laziness on the law enforcement side or just a lot of loopholes whatever um however I do think I'm, I'm going to DNF this because I don't care for the writing style like it jumps around a lot between the present in which he's doing his crimes and the past and I feel like I, I can't keep things straight like a storyline not a storyline a timeline and it's very frustrating for me so I am going to DNF this one I don't know if Anne Rule is just not the author for me but yeah I officially started the other book um, yesterday. It's called Kill Sh Kill Show. Um, 
Sorry, it's morning. I just woke up. Um, the book is by Daniel something Becker. I'll put the cover up here. Um, so this book, it says it's a true crime story. It's not true. It's a fictional version of... Um, it's not a generic case, but it's a girl that went missing and it basically is told in interviews from people that were spoken to, you know, about her whereabouts, see of her friends, her parents, the bus driver, um, her brother. So there are quite a few people that they're speaking to, but in the formatting, it is told like it'll say Daniel and blah, 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 blah. So it's so like interviews, like portions of interviews. So they interviewed all these people. Then they cut and spliced all the things together that these people said. So it's in like a chronological order of how it happened in real life. So it'll say like, oh, her mother said this and I didn't know her dad was going to do that is what the mom will say. And then it'll have dad's point of view. But the, all these people were interviewed separately. Um, from what I've read of reviews, it kind of takes an, a look at how people treat true crime. And uh, I'm enjoying it so far. I really like that. Every time somebody is speaking, it says their name and who they were to the victim of, we don't know yet what happened to this girl, um, but just that she disappeared. And, and there's kind of like foresh foreshadowing. Um, little did we know that this was going to be the worst day of our lives, that kind of thing. Um... Yes, this is a little different to put into a true crime reading vlog, but it kind of, like I said, takes a look at how people treat true crime. Um, so I felt like it could fit into this vlog. I also wanted to mention some true crime YouTube channels that I really enjoy. Um, one is Annie, her name is Annie Elise and her channel is Tend to Life. She does very thorough background on the cases that she talks about. Um, sometimes it's cases I've never heard about because a lot of these people focus on the same things that happen and you get tired of hearing about the same ones. She will give you a whole background on the case. Um, you get a like... She'll tell you how the person grew up and what led them to the situation that she's talking about because she covers all different things. She also does updates on the cases later on. If you follow her on Instagram, she will do like little reels that give you her um, opinion on things in terms of cases that are currently going on. So I really like her. Uh, there's Kendall Ray. She's very similar to Annie Elise in how they tell their um, cases with a lot of background information, which is sometimes I feel like a little overkill because like certain things, I don't, they don't really matter to me, but I like her too. And then there's like um, Law and Crime Network, which is more like a news type channel. And they will do like splicing of things all across the country that are happening. And they interview professionals that have a uh, background in whatever the case is. Like if it's a pedophile type case they'll have a da district attorney come in that has been has experience in those types of cases um i'm sure there's more but those are the ones that i watch and listen to on my tablet like i'll watch them 
while I'm doing the dishes or cleaning or whatever. Um, need a break from booktube stuff. So check them out. I will lick them. Lick, I won't lick them. I will link them down below. Um, but I'm going to continue Kill Show and hopefully finish it this weekend. And I will check in again on that one. So I am continuing reading. I'm not very far from where I was last time. But I got to the part where, like, the part of true crime, like, people's interest in it is becoming brought into the story. Um, the girl who went missing, her brother had done, like, a video of um, the parents talking and then just about the crime, blah, 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 blah. He put it on YouTube, I think. I don't know why, what for, but this girl who was working on a show that was similar to The Bachelor, saw it and pitched it to these people to make, like, I don't know if she's going to do, like, a show on it, but that's the update. Um, so I kind of have an idea of what the book is saying, where people are using other people's um, situations to their advantage and... Why are we using it as a valid form of entertainment? That's what I'm getting out of this. I'll check in later. I did also want to add that they were kind of targeting or aiming for this true crime show to be done in real time, like as everything is happening, where some and most actually true crime is about stuff that's already happened. So I'm not too far into it, but she is flying out to where the family is at. And I think they're going to try to pitch a show to the family and probably suggest that, oh, if we do a show about it, you may get more help, may have an easier time finding her. <laughs> so that's where I'm at. So I finished Kill Show yesterday, the day before yesterday, nighttime, whatever. And just thinking about it, I did make a couple notes. Um, so the whole book is told in interview form, and I don't think that is something that I enjoy. I did read Daisy Jones and the Six a couple of years ago, and that is also done in interview form. <laughs> Which I think if I had had the audio, it would have worked better for me. Um, so this book basically is discussing the depth that people will go to for fame and for money. Um, like, just one example that I'm thinking of where true crime is used for financial gain. Maybe not outright, but... Like that Jeffrey Dahmer show that got really popular on Netflix. Yes, I watched it. But there was a whole thing about um, getting the permission or the go ahead from the victims of Jeffrey Dahmer because they do discuss um, and use names of some of these people that were killed by him. So like, did the families get notification that this shit was being made? You know, that kind of thing. Um, are people using tragedy to exploit or exploiting tragedy to make money? Because a lot of times the money that's being made from these projects is not going to the families or, you know, victims, whatever. So in a sense, I feel guilty about that. But also in this book, there was a commentator, there was commentary from a sociology professor and like a uh, pop culture critic, I think. So it would be discussing or not discussing, it would be like interviewing people from the community or like the dad or, you know, somebody that this girl knew. And then it would take what that person said and then you'd hear from the sociology professor or the pop culture critic, whatever, to give some more background information on, like, 
phenomenons or whatever theories related to the case. So that was kind of interesting. Um, but I gave it three stars overall. I get it was a discussion on true crime. So that's how it fits into this. Even though this book itself was fictional, it did give you some thoughts on true crime. Are readers and watchers part of the problem? If we don't watch these things, are will they still get made? I feel like, I don't know, because I like watching them. I like learning about what happened. Sometimes people can learn from previous cases to help with new stuff. I like watching the YouTube channels, um, but when I think about it, and I'm thinking about this Anne rule book that I tried to read for this, she wasn't there. And in that book, she is writing it, it with like conversation aspects to it. I don't feel like true crime should be written like that because it's true. So you're taking like ideas and stuff and she was, she more or less wrote like a conversation based off the ideas. So that's not true crime because it's not true conversations, if that makes sense. Um, yeah. I have started something different, something lighter than all of these books were because I need a little break. But do you enjoy true crime? Is there any cases that you find yourself like gravitated towards? Because there are certain things that I, I don't want to say enjoy learning about, but that I, my mind is like, oh, this is interesting. So, you know, I feel a little guilty after reading this book about my opinion on true crime, but what can you do? But thank you for watching this video. Let me know what you think about true crime and, you know, all that down in the comments below. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.